So, last uh, class I have discussed about the tension pile and the pile subjected to lateral loads. Now, when the structure which heavily loaded uh, then we have to go for another type of deep foundation that is called well foundation. So, that is used for, for heavily loaded structure like bridge, bridge foundation where we generally use this uh, well foundation. So, today's class I will discuss about various components of oil foundation and then how to determine the depth of oil foundation. So, now first uh, what are the different types of oil foundation as I mentioned that this is used for uh, for heavily loaded structure. So, and then what are the different types of oil foundation. So, depending upon that um, construction uh, methodology there are the different type of type of oil foundation. So, first uh, we will go so for that is uh, oil foundation. So, first types of oil now first uh, type that is called open cation or open oil. Now, in this uh, type that about this is our existing mid level below any river now here this one is the water level so this is water level this is the existing base of the uh, water body or the river and then open oil the top and bottom is open during construction so that means here uh, opal open oil is allowed to sink into the water and this is another and then this portion is filled with concrete. So, that means, when it is an open type of oil that here top and bottom portion is open during construction. That means, during construction this top portion this is the top and this is the bottom portion. So, these two portion are open during construction and then this can be circular type and this can be rectangular type also and the process of sinking, uh, sinking is continued till the uh, reach the required depth. So, that means, this process when it is sink, sink into the uh, uh, water. So, it is continued till the required depth is reached. Now, once the required depth is reached, then the bottom portion is sealed with concrete. So, this once the required depth is reached, means bottom portion is sealed with concrete and then the ship, uh, uh, this is the water portion and the sapped which are filled with sand. Now, once that means during the construction, this top portion and the bottom portion are open. Once it is reached at the ground surface or the required depth, the bottom portion is sealed with concrete and the shaft is filled with sand. Now, advantage of this type of open oil, well that the it can be constructed up up to any depth or the up to the required depth 
and with a relatively low cost condition. So, and the limitation or disadvantage of this uh, open oil is the if the boulder deposit is there, if the um, this ground surface or this uh, bottom of the uh, water body is there, there is boulder deposit uh, present, then it is very difficult to um, process or progress the construction of this type of oil. And then uh, very uh, slow, I mean, this, this, this deposit, this is very slow construction and concrete seal is done under the uh, water. So, that means, once it is reached in the bottom, then the concrete sealing is done under the water, which is not very effective and that is the advantage uh, and the disadvantage of this uh, open uh, oil or open caching. So, next uh, type of the oil is that is called box oil. or floating cache. So, this is second type of uh, well foundation. So, here again if this is water surface and this is the well. and this is the ground of the water body. This is top bottom. So, in case of uh, first uh, case where the top and bottom uh, both uh, uh, are remain open during the construction, but in this type of oil, the top is uh, open, but the bottom is closed during construction. So, this is the closed bottom and this is the open top. So, that means this type of um, uh, oil, the top. Pin at top and closed at bottom. So, so this is cast in uh, land. So that means before this is this is uh, as it is closed. So during the first case, the bottom was sealed. After it is reached up to the desired depth. So, that means, the casting was done under the water which was not so effective for the first case the top oil, but in case of bottom uh, box oil or floating cation the construction cast is done in the land because as this is the sealed or the uh, bottom is in closed condition and can be used when land is not very uh, that means, this can be used when the load is not very heavy and bearing strata is up to a shallow depth. So, that means, uh, up to a shallow depth this can be done and the advantage of this type of well is that, that uh, foundation band has to be prepared before and so that means, uh, the advantage or uh, this advantage is done this, this is the construction is done in the land. So, it is effective and the disadvantage is that before the it is placed uh, into the ground the land has to be prepared. So, and the bearing capacity of the base has to be properly calculated. So, that otherwise it, it is very difficult to construct this type of uh, well into the soil. So, that means, when we uh, calculate the this prepare the bed and then the calculate the bearing capacity all this factor then the scouring of the foundation action has to be uh, uh, incorporated during the calculation. 
So, next type of well that is uh, first one is the open question then the box uh, well and the second one is the P, uh, pneumatic well. So, this pneumatic well is another type of well foundation. So, that is again this is the uh, water surface and this is ground surface. So, this is constructed in a dry condition. So, in this uh, well, the ex, uh, this is when excavation is done under the dry condition. The once once the depth required depth is achieved, the working chamber is filled with the concrete. And the advantage of this type of well that the better con control during the sh uh, sinking and the suspension can be done. The bottom of the chamber can be sealed effectively with concrete under dry condition. So, that means here the first case the concrete bottom of the concrete was sealed under uh, the below the water. So, uh, which is not so effective, but here the concrete thing is done the it is bottom of the concrete is sealed under the dry condition which is so effective. And the disadvantage is that the cost of this type of uh, well is very high and the limit of the depth of the penetration below the well is uh, around the 30 to 35 meter. So, that means, if uh, we compare the three types of well the, the first one is the top uh, well, where the concrete is done below the water and the wet condition which is not so effective. And the second one is concrete is done in, uh, in uh, casting is done in the land, but the uh, second one it is uh, applicable if the uh, bearing strata is at the shallow depth and during so and the and the bearing ca capacity calculation has to be properly uh, done. And the third one is it is also done up to the required depth, but the, uh, the advantage is that the concreting is done under dry condition which is very effective. And the uh, uh, disadvantage and the, all the advantages are explained for the different types of uh, this oil. In the first case the cost is not high, but concrete is done in oil uh, wet condition. In the last case it is so high uh, cost is high. So, these are the limitation and the advantages of different types of oil and depending upon the cost of the project and the type of the uh, 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 land or the base condition and we have to use the different types of oil foundation. Now, uh, next part is that the components of the oil foundation. So, what are the different types of components of the oil foundation? So, first uh, for the different types of uh, components, first we if we draw that is the first is the pyre or uh, that above that pyre we will we have to place this garter that is the bridge garter. That is placed above a bearing. So, this one is the garter. this one is the bearing. 
So, first this is a beach girder, then this is a bearing, then which is placed on a pyre. This is top portion, then this is a pyre. Pyre. Then this various components of this wheel that will start. Then this is how different components. And this is vertical reinforcement. Of the pyre, this portion is this is a concrete. Then this one is the bottom plug. So, again this is the top plug, where again the concreting is done, filled with top plug, again this is the bottom plug. And here this is sand filling. So, now these are the various components of the pyre. So, the, this is the well. So, this is pyre, then this one is called as the top plug. Then this one is the bottom plug. Then this is cutting edge, and this is sand filling. Then this one is well cap. Then this is the body of the oil, main body of the oil that will oil staining. Now, these are the various components of the oil, and now if I draw the section of the same oil, then we can draw like this. These are the horizontal, this is vertical reinforcement. This is horizontal reinforcement. So, 
So, uh, these are the various components. So, now the uh, purpose of this uh, various type of components. So, when this top filling the uh, this provides contacts between the oil cap and the sand filling and this helps to transfer the load which is coming from the structure to the sand filling. So, from here pile cap, so it will transfer the load from pile cap to the sand filling that is the purpose of this top plug. Now, the uh, oil cap which is made of RCC slab, so that is uh, cast uh, with the staining and the wall staining that is the main body of this oil and the bottom plug after the oil is sink up to the desired level then the base is plugged with concrete and this concrete is, is done for this uh, different types of oil it is done in different condition. So, now the, the cutting edge the purpose of this cutting edge is to cast ca cut the soil uh, during the sinking. So, now and this uh, other various components of this oil and the purpose of these components are explain. And now, secondly that during the construction or the excavation of the hole, the uh, uh, dredge hole is formed. Now, the definition of this dredge hole is that, is that this is the hole formed during the excavation of the soil and which is filled uh, with sand later on. So, that means, during the excavation this hole is uh, formed and this hole is called the dredge hole which is filled with sand later on. So, that means, the this the definition of this one is the hole which is formed due to the excavation. of soil during the construction. So, later on it is filled with sand. So, these are the various components. So, this is the uh, x x section and these are the horizontal reinforcement and this is the vertical reinforcement which is shown here. So, next uh, uh, part is that what are the various type of um, shape of the oil. So, now the different types of the oil that have been explained in the uh, components of the oil, now the shape of the oil. <coughs> now, first uh, that one is called the circular shape of uh, shape of the oil or circular oil. So, this is one type of oil that is circular oil. So, next one uh, oil can be in this form. So, this is double D oil now oil can be in this form also. So, this is dumb oil, dumbbell form of oil. So, now oil can be in this form also. So, 
where this is the circular dredge hole. Now, it can be in this form also. These are the circular dredge hole and this is octagonal shape. So, this is also circular dredge hole and this is octagonal or double octagonal shape. So, these are the various shape of the well. So, depending upon the requirement, we have to go for different types of well. Now, the uh, when you construct uh, well, we have to uh, keep in mind that the staining thick thickness should be sufficient, so that uh, it can be easily sink into the well and then the dredge hole should be large enough to permit the dredging. So, when and another condition is the when you construct the dredge hole that should be large enough and the base of the structure should be uh, sufficiently stable and the size is sufficient to transfer the load. So, this condition you have to take in care when you construct the well. So, next one that we will go for that that how we have we have to calculate the depth of the well. So, now this uh, if I summarize the other parts that then when uh, the different types of oil foundation and these types are in the uh, open oil, then the box type of oil and then the and then third one is the pneumatic oil. So, when we construct this type of oil foundation, so we have to very careful then this the, the base, base that we have to construct that should be sufficiently rigid and then uh, they, that should sufficiently transfer the load from the uh, superstructure to the foundation soil. And then uh, depending upon the different types of uh, well, then we have to construct it for various uh, different form and various purpose and when these are the various components that will also be designed during the construction of the well. The next we have to be, be determine the what would be the required depth of a well foundation and how we calculate the depth of the oil foundation. Because the oil foundation when you construct in a for a river bed, then you have to be very careful for the scouring effect, because that will uh, play a very important role. Then what would be the grip length below the foundation, uh, the, the below the uh, scour level, then what would be the minimum uh, thickness of the, uh, of the or the minimum depth of the foundation that we have to be very carefully designed. So, now the next part that is the depth of the foundation. So, when we construct the depth of the foundation, as I mentioned, the scouring depth will play a very important load role. So, that then this cover depth, how we calculate this cover depth? Because this cover depth means that during this flow of the water, the some you know, soil will be taken out by the flow, then then we have to consider this covering during our design. So, this cover depth we can calculate that D this cover depth is equal to 0.473 root 3 q y f. Now, where the, the and this is D this cover depth is below H f l high flood level. Now, here q is equal to design discharge that is meter q per second and f is called as Lessig's silt factor.
that is 1.76 root to the power m, where m is equal to mean size of particles in millimeter. Now, this when so how we will calculate the design discharge. So, design discharge we will calculate. So, that is uh, given parameter. So, that we have to first determine or from the previous history of the uh, site or yeah, that is we have to give it as the input to calculate the cover depth. So, that maximum discharge or maximum design discharge that we have to consider and then this Lacy seal function factor we will calculate and then uh, how we calculate the m. So, that means the particle size of that area. So, that means soil. So, we have to collect the soil sample for the required depth and then from this soil sample you have to go for particle distribution analysis. So, that grain size distribution analysis that depending upon which type of soil it is. So, so I have to go for the sieve analysis or have to go for the high wind analysis. So, we have the grain size distribution curve. So, once we have the grain size distribution curve then from that grain size distribution curve we can determine what would be the m value. Because once we get that gain size distribution curve, then we have the gain size distribution. So, that means here if I draw the gain size distribution curve. So, this is the particle size which is millimeter. So, that is in the log scale and this is the percent finer. So, we have uh, this type of curve we will get. So, that is the gain size distribution curve. And from this gain size distribution curve, we have to calculate the mean size of particles in what is the mean size of this particle and we can take the weighted uh, average of this uh, particle size. So, there will be basically a particle size and from there we calculate what is the weighted average of the particle size of this that uh, area and from that particle size we will did that will be used as m value and then from using that m value we can calculate what would be the seal factor f. So, this design discharge as input f we can calculate based on the particle distribution curve or uh, that we have to done for by the particle distribution uh, analysis and from that test we can determine the m value and then from that m value we will determine the f and from there we will get the scour depth. What is the scour depth? required. Now, once we get the scour depth, then another uh, length that is required is the grip, grip length. And now, grip length is generally is given by one third of d max. d max means maximum scour depth. Now, according to the IS code that uh, that this d max should not be less than 2 meter for piers and abutment with arches or that means this grip length that should not be less than 2 meter for piers and abutment with arches on that should not be less than 1.2 meter for an abutment. with other structure. Now, this d max is the maximum scour depth that what would be a 
maximum cover depth that for I code also recommend some values. That means that the grip length that you have to provide additional that is one third of the D max. Now, for the D max I S code that I S 3955 that is recommend some maximum scour depth of the scour value. And that depends on the different types of the section of the river. Okay, in state section, that this maximum D max is given the 1.27 of D. So, D is uh, given that is the scour depth that we have calculated and this is D max. Similarly, for a moderate bend, this value is given by 1.5 D. So, for severe bend, this is 1.75 D for right angle bend that is given 2 d. So, depending upon the CBG state section then this will be so that the source that is taken is Ranjan and Rao 2000 book. So, now uh, in the state portion if the section is state then we have to provide D max value is 1.27 D and the for the moderate bend we have to provide uh, D max is 1.5 D and for severe bend. So, that is 1.75 D and right angle bend is to be 2 D. So, depending upon the a section of the river or how much t you have to consider. So, that we can calculate. So, from this one we can calculate the d max and then we have to d you have to calculate for the scour depth and the seal factor does have uh, mentioned. So, for depending uh, once we can one process is we can determine the f value from the laboratory test. So, what would be the f value that we can determine from the laboratory test. And as I explained, then for gain size distribution analysis, we can determine the f value. We can determine the m value, and from that m value, we can determine the f value. And another option that for different uh, tables uh, and is available, uh, uh, tables are available for different types of soil. What would be the f value? So that we can also use. Or better is we can test the soil from that uh, area, from the site, and from that testing data, we can determine the what would be the m value and based on that we can determine the f value. So, f value we can determine and from there we can determine d value. Now, from this uh, difference type of section we can determine the d max value and then so that means, the d max is generally varies 1.27 times to 1.2.75 or 2 um, of the d and then from there we can determine the grip length or the grip length will be one third of the d max. So, now uh, the what is the minimum depth of the foundation. So, that means it is recommend again the IS score recommend that that the minimum depth of foundation is 1.33 times of D max. below HFL. So, once we have the D max then what would be the mix minimum depth of the foundation. So, grip blend that we have to add with the foundation with the depth of the foundation. So, that means the minimum depth of the foundation will be as one third is a grip blend. So, that will be 1.33 times of the D max. So, below the high flood level. 
So, once we get the d max or depth of the foundation. So, say depth the minimum depth of the foundation is the d. So, that is a d or the depth of the foundation is the d. This is, so, this is d is the depth of the foundation. of the well, then at depth what would be the load carrying allowable load carrying capacity of the soil. So, again for this I s 3955-1976, they propose that this will be the depth of the foundation. So, that is at 5.4 n square b plus 1600 plus n square into d. So, by which we can determine what is the allowable load carrying capacity of the soil at the depth of the foundation d. So, now where this q a is the allowable load carrying capacity So, which is given in kg per meters, uh, kg per meter square. This is kg per meter square, and then the B is given that is the smaller diameter of the well. Meter of well section in meter and d is the depth of the foundation foundation below scour level. So, that is in meter and here he in is corrected S p t value. So, if I have we know that this uh, b section and this n is the corrected S p t value, then we can determine what would be the allowable load carrying capacity of the uh, soil at the depth d below the scour level. So, now and then we can use that whether the load which is coming on the soil is greater than a q a or not. If it and then you apply again we have to apply the factor of the allowable safety and then we have to check whether the load which is coming on, on the soil which is greater than of this load or not. Then if it is greater than you have to again redesign these things for the uh, for that particular soil and uh, at that depth. So, and the, this way we can uh, determine the what would be the depth of the foundation, uh, we can determine the required depth of the well foundation and at depth what would be the uh, bearing capacity of the soil and then we have to check using the design this bearing capacity of the soil is good enough to resist the load which is coming from the structure. And then now so, again we have uh, I mentioned that you have to design these components very uh, accurately, because we have some different components of the oil foundation and then we are, when we are constructing the oil foundation there should be a lateral load which is coming from, from the uh, in terms of uh, water pressure or that means these things we have to consider during the design, because this q a that I mentioned that is the bearing capacity, but when you design the total oil foundation then you have to design some other components of load because that is the water pressure will come, then the seismic load that may act during the 
uh, light uh, light period of this oil. So that means the dead load, then the um, uh, those load live load that will come during uh, the construction period uh, during the lifetime of this oil. So that means we have to consider all these things during the design of the oil. So that means that this only bearing capacity calculation that is not enough to design a proper different components of the oil. So that is the bearing capacity that will give oh, the, okay fine this load which is coming uh, on the soil which is capable this soil can take that load or not at that depth. So and depending upon the site condition. So, we have to then uh, uh, increase the load if it is not sufficient, increase the depth of the well if the uh, it is not sufficient to carry that load at that mm, the required depth. So, this thing now the forces of different uh, forces that is acting uh, that are acting on uh, the well foundation. So, there is different forces if uh, are So, these forces includes that the wind force that acts on the uh, well foundation the due to this wind force, then the seismic force then the force due to the water current current then the force due to the buoyancy then force due to the temperature variation in the next to the force due to the earth pressure So, these are the forces generally acting um, uh, on a um, oil foundation and definitely the traffic force. Load that is also acting on the oil foundation and in additional to that if it is in the curve then the centrifugal force will also act into the oil foundation. So, when we design this oil foundation, we have to consider all these forces which are acting on the oil foundation during design and this lateral earth pressure, this earth pressure is the basically the lateral earth pressure which is acting on the oil foundation due to the soil surrounded by the oil. Now, when uh, this all combination of force uh, we have to apply and then based on then we can uh, calculate what would be the uh, net horizontal force that is acting on the uh, oil, what is the moment that is acting on the base of the oil, then what is the um, uh, vertical or uh, downward force that is acting on the oil including the self weight of the oil. So, these forces we have to uh, forces are, uh, are to be considered during the design of a oil foundation. Now, in uh, this class I have also dis uh, discussed about the dimension part then the depth part and now these forces you have to consider during the uh, design and now the design methodology that are uh, available. So, that is basically uh, there are a few methods that is available one is uh, uh, Tazaki's method. So, another is the first method was the design when we are talking about the design of a uh, oil foundation then we are talking about the, the lateral stability of the oil. So, what uh, how we can check whether the uh, oil is stable uh, uh, under lateral force or the combination of force or uh, force and moment whether that oil is stable or not. So, this lateral stability of this oil. oil we have to check whether this oil is stable or not. Now, the different analysis are available that is for the Tarzaki analysis, then the B 
Pinder's analysis, then Banerjee and Gangopadhyay's analysis. and IRC also a common one design or lateral stability check methodology and that is IRC 45 1972. So, the, by using these methods we can uh, check whether the oil which is uh, laterally stable or not and but among this uh, methodology i will discuss about this irc method and, and that will be dis discussed in the next class then how we can check the lateral stability of the oil how we can check uh, then uh, because this lateral stability are basically from the uh, moment that is coming so that means the uh, resisting moment that should be greater than the moment which is acting on the um, oil uh, or the base of the oil and, and another check that the um, uh, bearing capacity check that means the load which is acting or the stress which is acting on the soil. So, soil should will to carry that stress. So, that means the we have to check whether that uh, moment which is uh, applied in the oil that should be uh, counterbalanced by the um, foundation. So, that means uh, that is one check moment check another one the that uh, soil pressure that is sufficient uh, the soil pressure, pressure which is coming on the soil. So, that means soil is sufficient to carry that uh, load and then we have to check another condition the horizontal uh, force which is acting. So, that means the uh, uh, that should be a counterbalance or resist, uh, resisting force we have to uh, that is sufficient to counterbalance that horizontal force that means we have to check whether horizontal force uh, which is was horizontal force checking we have to check uh, for the moment which is acting and we have to check whether the soil pressure which is acting on the base of the soil which is sufficient or not so once we design or we check all these uh, things then after this checking of this uh, uh, oil foundation we can say now this dimension we can provide for this particular condition. So, first we have to consider this load or combination of loads and then based on that we consider what would be the net horizontal pressure or force what is the moment net moment acting on the base of the uh, oil and then based on that uh, we have to consider the what is the net vertical force that is acting on the oil. So, vertical force horizontal force and then the moment that is uh, acting on the base those we have to calculate and then we have to check whether these things soil can able to take uh, this vertical stress acting on the soil that is able to take on uh, soil is able to take or not. So, that means, that means the check that is we have to consider that uh, for this purpose that what are the check that means the first check is with the summation of the vertical force and the next one summation of the horizontal force and the next one summation of the moment. So, we have to check all these three um, things that means that this uh, this is the total downward or force that is including the base reaction and side friction. Then W H is the net lateral earth pressure including friction that can be at side and base and net one is the summation of the moment including the lateral earth pressure and the friction side and the base. So, 
these are the uh, force or uh, that the three equilibrium condition that mean bar, uh, uh, sigma v particle force uh, summation of the horizontal force and the summation of the moment that you have to check and according to that you have to check whether the oil can resist this horizontal uh, force and the soil can resist this vertical force or the stress which is acting on the soil and the moment the which is acting on the oil. Well.